Hold on. Hello everyone and I welcome you all to Adutap. So in today's session we are yet going to cover very important components of your management part. Yesterday we have discussed 40 questions based on different different components of management, different different chapters of management and today yet again we are going to cover different different parts of questions of different different chapters of management. Okay, so today our focus will be on the high level of questions. We will be going deep into topics like personality and perceptions. Then we will be also covering different different topics regarding, I would say, ethics. Ethics is also one of the most important chapters of your management when it comes to objective part as well as for descriptive part. So I request you all to please pay your attention. And if I am audible and visible to all of you, you can give me your confirmation message in the chat box below hi good evening uh, Aditi is hello good evening sir Ashish is also saying good evening yes good evening Tapan is also saying good evening so warm good evening to all of you so let's start our today's session so this is my last session with all of you with for phase two so I request you all to please focus on this particular session I will be asking many questions based on different different concepts <clears throat> so before moving ahead, I would like to tell you if you are targeting RBI 2023 and if you are also aspiring to become a, a NABAR grade A officer in 2022 or a SEBI grade A officer in 2023, then you can uh, combine, then you can enroll yourself in the uh, prestigious institutions of Adutap and you can get flat 30 plus extra 20% off. This particular code, you have to use this particular code and you can get 50% off. Now, if you are new to our channel please subscribe to our youtube channel and the pdf of this particular session will be available in the telegram group Anji, so this time all is good so let's begin with our session we are not wasting much of your time and i request you all to please pay your attention and be uh, uh, and be participative in my lecture so now question number fun my friends let's start with the, some basic warm-up of motivation questions and this is very important question which is based on motivation different content theories now let's see who gives me the correct answer for question number one my friends Hanji. so let's see who gives me the correct answer for question number one there are various motivation and hygiene factors of motivation which has been given and explained under the Hansback theory of motivation so in the same regard you have to identify this example which is not an hygiene factor so let's see who gives me the right answer so Uttam is going with C Aditi and Karthik are also going with C yes the answer of this particular question will be C growth and promotion are an example of your motivating factors now my dear friends you have to let me know whether this particular statement is true or false so listen to my statement very much carefully and you can find the same questions in the phase one uh, phase paper one or even in the paper two that is of the objective parts okay so this is based on your concept so for my course my statement is that hygiene factors decide that an employee is on the satisfaction level or no satisfaction level is this particular statement true or false hygiene factors decide that a particular employee is on satisfaction or a no satisfaction level is this particular statement true or false as simple as that let me know your concepts if they are strong then you can easily answer this particular question if not then sorry to say you have to mug up a lot now hygiene factors i'm waiting for all of your answers let's see who gives me the right answer yes so maximum of you are going with false yes hygiene factors do not decide between the satisfaction or no satisfaction instead they decide between sat dissatisfaction and no dissatisfaction super my friends now my second statement to all of you the answer of this particular statement which i just asked you will be false now my second statement to all of you will be that motivating factors motivating factor which are also known as satisfiers are affecting the motivation of an employee for long term is this particular statement true or false let me see who gives me the right answer motivating factors which are also known as the satisfiers they provide long term motivation so is this particular statement true or false let's see who gives me the right answer 
the answer to my first statement was false and this is my second statement for all of you let's see who gives me the right answer yes snehal is going with true let's see what other people are answering so snehal is going with true okay abhishek is also going with true aditi is also going with true uttam is also going with true yes this particular statement is true so we have covered about satisfiers and we have covered about motivators hygiene factors in the part 1 of this particular series that was of based on management so if you have not watched that lecture please go and revise your concepts via that particular lecture so we have discussed about motivational factors yesterday and we also have discussed about hygiene factors these are certain examples of hygiene factors and these are certain example of motivating factors now my dear friend let me ask you one more question which is based on your concepts only which of the following factors either it is motivational or hygiene are extrinsic are extrinsic to an employer so now let me know these two are the set of options intrinsic to employer is called as or you can let me know which category has uh, intrinsic to employees cat, uh, characteristics yes hygiene factors are intrinsic so these are something which are motivated outside that particular individuals this is your intrinsic so i hope you know about different different concepts this is really very very much crucial for all of you now let's move ahead towards personality perceptions emotions mood eq and iq these are certain very very i would say low hanging fruit in your exams if you find the question on different different components of eq and iq i think you can easily mark your answer because the concept is very much easy now let me see who is the who is giving me the right answer yes the answer of that particular question was hygiene because they are extrinsic intrinsic mean you have to mark your answer as satisfier or motivators Uh, Meer, Meer, you can mail that particular doubt at hello at the rate at rutap. You will get your strategy related call with, uh, with any of the faculties. Hi, Ji. So let's see who gives me the right answer for question number two. This particular question is testing your knowledge on the basics of emotions versus moods. Let's see who gives me the right answer. i'm waiting for your answer so please be more responsive so that we can have a good session and if you are uttam is going with d shivam is also going with b shivam is going with b okay and uttam is going with d so can someone want to go with c as well snehal is also going with d kartik is going with b okay see first thing which you have to understand this are uh, understand is that these two are certain way of reactions that how you react and how you behave in your daily life if you see emotions are of more intense in nature okay and moods are of less intense in nature if you see intense we mean that they are more of you know they push you towards your goals so emotions are more of intense and moods are of less intense so please notice this particular point that's why statement d was incorrect mood is more int intense this is incorrect my friends that's why the answer of this particular statement was d also my dear friends please note this particular point yes this particular statement emotions may last for only short period of time whereas moods may last for a long period of time why because these are more intense so if something is more in intense and they are not consistent you will lose that particular feeling under a short period of time only whereas in moods you will feel all the long period of time and you will also see that it is more consistent in nature and you can read about different components from this particular slide now let's move to question number 3 meer this is the website hello at the rate edutap.co.in question number 3 goes back to the level uh, of communication this is a very uh, if you see there are five basic chapters of management which is your first and the foremost is your motivation motivation sorry then you comes to your communication then you move to your leadership then general management and then all the others for example in others you will keep organizational change organizational behavior so in my opinion you should uh, i would say do all the first four chapters on your tips you should be remembering different different concepts regarding leadership communication motivation and general management day in and day out because there will be a question in the objective part from these chapters for sure now let's see who gives me the right answer so maximum of you are going with d okay 
सो आई कैन सी नाउ माई काउंटर क्वेश्चन टू यू माई फ्रेंड इज चलो द सेम क्वेश्चन रिमेन द आंसर विल बी डी एस द आंसर इज डी दैट दे ट्रस्ट सो दिस बेग्स दिस बिकम दिस इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट की वर्ड नाउ माई काउंटर क्वेश्चन टू यू इज द सेम क्वेश्चन इज देयर यू हैव टू आइडेंटिफाई द टाइप ऑफ ग्रेफ पाइन कम्युनिकेशन वेयर इन वन रिस्पेक्टिव एम्प्लॉय टेल्स the all the employees who are from his group and it is also known as gossip chain so i saw i'm really very sorry i was not able to form the question but i just uh, reveal the answer so what is grave pine grave pine is just a rumor chain okay so it's just a rumor chain which is a form of informal communication yesterday only we have covered this particular concept now grave pine can have four particular parts now these four particular parts can be a type of single strand which goes from this particular level to this particular level gossip gossip is also known as group under group i will tell the, all the employees who i know probability i may tell someone or i may not also tell someone it is more of chances cluster is all about trust okay so i hope you know about this particular point now my dear friends i am not moving ahead because i wanted to test your knowledge yesterday we have covered this particular model which is known as mother of all models of communication which is known as clonlan and shannon wever uh, clon wenen and weaver model of communication how many steps are there under this particular model can someone let me know how many steps are there we have covered this particular question in the part 1 of the series we all know that Shannon and Weaver model of communication is known as the mother of all the models of communication. How many steps are there under this particular model? Can someone let me know whether it's seven, eight, nine, ten, or eleven? Let's see who gives me the right answer. How many steps are there in the in the mother of all models of communication, which is also known as Shannon and Weaver model of communication? Yes, so maximum of you are going with eight. Okay, superb. Yes, eight steps are there. And what is the most unique step which you will see under this particular model? Yes, Shannon and V. Not Weber, I think is Shannon and Weiner. So can someone let me know what is that particular unique step that differentiate this particular model from the rest models which we have studied? Yes, noise was added. Superb. Noise is something which was added. Now, my dear friend, yesterday I was getting many queries on my personal uh, official ID as well. That what is different models or different forms of non-verbal communication? We have covered this in the previous lecture as well. Now you have to let me know what is the communication medium when I am using the word haptics. Very easy. What is the communication medium, communication channel when I am using the word haptics? Can someone let me know? what is the communication medium and channel when i am using the term haptics or you touch okay yes touch can be a very important component touch or hand okay so this is really very important can you also let me know what is the medium of communication when i am when i am using this particular concept which is known as kinesics when i'm using yes touch or hands is is very 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 good i can see maximum of you are going on the right track now yesterday i was finding many difficult answers when i'm saying the word kinex kinesics what is the communication medium which i'm using is it my hand is it my eyes is it my body language is it my leg movement or is it with some reference to date what is the medium or what is the channel or what is the part of body which i'm referring to kinesics ke andar can i see the right answer yes it's the body language superb body language in the kinesics now if you go deep you will see under eyes it is known as oculuses these are certain examples of non verbal communication so you have to understand different different concepts regarding under uh, i would say non verbal communication now my dear friend there is a concept of para language as well can someone let me know the other name of para language it is known as prosodics not wasting much of your time now let's move ahead because we have revised them a lot now my dear friend let me ask one more question and this will be last from my communication and then i will not come on this topic again what is the other name of psychological barriers which we have discussed yesterday what is the other name of psychological barriers which we have discussed yesterday only so it's a quite revision for all of you yes now maximum of you are going with body language superb what is the other name of psychological barriers which was revised in the yesterday lecture 
there are four kinds of barrier to communication i hope you all know that the first is regarding cementing then your psychological then you comes to personal related or then it comes to organizational related so these are four types of barrier which are seen under the communication process yes psychological barriers are also known as emotional barriers uttam has given the right answer superb now we are coming to question number 4 this is a very easy concept let me see who gives me the right answer for question number 4 identify the communication strategy which involves two key steps first is to understand speaker's idea and then offering the idea back to the speaker so it's like two way communication which is happening a person who two persons who are involved in the communication process a very easy question i want you to answer this particular question under 30 seconds my friends let's not waste much of your time as well because this is a very important period admit cards are all already out let me see who gives me the right answer yes it's reflective listening reflecting listening is a technique where when one person communicates to another and this person again then pass the feedback this is really very very important and if you want to understand such models are also very important for the process of communication so nothing much to discuss just a basic concept which i wanted to discuss with all of you now we are coming to conflict today we are going to, i would say deep into the management now we are coming under the types of conflict we all know that conflict is a stage or conflict is a i would say situation where the two persons are not coming to a common understanding they have different different concepts they have different different processes for doing that particular thing so conflict is a state of no equilibrium now conflict can be divided under two parts or first you answer this particular question till then i will wait for your answer identify the type of conflict where conflict supports the goal of the group improve its performance and thus results in a constructive form of conflict yes maximum of you are going with c yes it's functional conflict conflict can be divided into two categories the first is functional and the second is difunctional under functional please mind you that conflict will play a positive role for your organization conflict Uh, will encourage brainstorming in your organization but under die functional conflict would only play a role of negative force which means that your productivity will go down but under this particular forum your productivity will increase so this is really very important for your exams basic of conflict and basic of different different stages of conflict you should know it han ji so constructive cordle which is also known as functional is integrating in nature it combines the organization whereas destructive conflict which is also known as die functional it means under polarization this is really very important for all of you can someone let me know uh, this is a very high quality question although i know maximum of you will go right because all the toppers are now sitting in my chat how many uh, if you understand the process of conflict okay how many stages are there under process of conflict for example if we have understood the shannon and weaver model of communication there are eight steps how many stages of uh, are there under the process of conflict the options to for you are 4 5 6 7 8 chalo let me see who is reading out of the box who is reading to the point and who is reading two stages so two stages is not even in the option so how can answer can be two stages let me see who gives me the right answer yes aditi snehal shivam are all going with the right answer that is five most important the conflict if any questions come on conflict then please if it is a 15 marker or a 10 marker and if you are not finding that you know they are no, you are not able to develop that good word limit use such side topics to develop your answer now let's come to question number 6 my friends Which of the following statement is incorrect regarding organi- co- collegial model of organizational behavior? So I I hope you know there are five models of organizational behavior. We will be discussing that. Chalo, let's have a good discussion on different models of co- organizational behavior. But right now, let me know the correct answer for question number six. Which of the following statement is incorrect about the collegial model of organizational behavior? By the time you answer, I will take just a small water break. and this so who will be giving me the right answer for question number 6 yes there are five stages 
who will be giving me the right answer for question number 6 this is a very easy question even if you don't know regarding collegial model then too you can answer this particular question and in exam you will find such questions because you cannot cover management in a whole so you have to understand the technique of selective risk taking so do that selective test taking live with me right now yes so maximum of you are going with c yes collegial model is based on individual work this particular statement is incorrect because collegial model is now based on the team work okay so this is really very important for all of you to know that that collegial model is met to the individual is met to the team work it's not your individual work so please remember this particular thing now let's discuss about different different models of communication so you can read about collegial model from here now if you see we have already studied uh, the maslow theory or i would say different different motivational or different different leadership theories now if you see apply the same theory of autocratic leadership over here so autocratic leader or autocratic model autocratic model of organizational behavior will be followed by autocratic leader nothing much to explain all the different features of autocratic leader will be followed over here now let's come to supportive supportive mein you have to remember this particular term which is transformational leader transformational leader whatever qualities of transformational leader you have will be followed under supportive model under custodial custodial mein the main thing is regarding safety needs of maslow okay so if you need about if you need job security if you need security then it will be provided by the person who is following custodial model collegial model is all about team work in a uh, henry fiolf the 14th principle spirit de crops that talks about this particular model only that is all about team work so i am relating the different different models to the different different syllabus stacks and what is system model system model is all about holistic nature holistic nature it means that all your different different components of management goes under uh, i would say in tandem there is no uh, i would say discoordination so you have to follow the term holistic nature holistic nature for system models so autocratic model just apply the theory of autocratic leader supportive model just apply the overall theory of transformational leader custodial model just apply the overall needs which we have discussed under maslow and under maslow you have to focus on safety needs which is also known as security needs now under collegial model you have to focus on team work which i have already told you and under system model you just have to focus on the overall structure of the organization now my dear friend can someone let me know how many needs were defined by maslow how many needs were defined by maslow because we have just used the word maslow so let me ask you a very very easy question so those who will be giving the answer as incorrect they have to do a huge wake up call han ji so let me see who gives me the right answer yes there are five needs now my dear friend according to different different author there is one more need which has been added to maslow theory and this is known as uh, extended maslow theory so can someone let me know what is the particular need we have discussed this particular need in the yesterday lex lecture as well this is extended maslow pyramid there are already five needs but it has been added to one more need now total six needs are there but according to the standard books and according to the rbi syllabus follow this only but just for your higher understanding and just for your uh, in his gam so what can be the that particular need can someone let me know we have discussed that particular need in the yesterday lecture yes shivam swati have come with the right answer it's transdant needs very important so please focus on all the different different concepts which i am focusing right now this is really very important yes now i can see maximum of you are coming to the right answer now we are coming to very important question of personality and perception now let me see who gives me the right answer Question number seven is on your screen, my friend. Sigmund Freud personality theory is based on which of the following component? Is it only the ID state? Is it only the ego state? Is it the super ego, or it is the combination of all or none of the above? Let me see who gives me the right answer for question number seven. Yes, ERG theory has been derived from Maslow theory only. Yes, it's D. so if you see personality or the overall st the structure of that particular human being according to sigmund freud has been given by three particular stages the first is id second is ego and the third is super ego now just for an explanation purpose i am using this particular example or you can also uh, use different different examples for example id id is all about daydreaming okay 
it's all about what goes in your unconscious mind it is only focusing on the needs which you are seeing it doesn't look to the different conditions for example i want to become the prime minister of india this is my id i am not looking to different different components i am not looking to different different constraint as well but my id says that i wanted to become a prime minister of india ego ego is something which happens under the conscious mind please remember this particular point and ego keeps id in check it says that you cannot be uh, for example let's take my id is that i wanted to become the prime minister of india ego says that you cannot become prime minister of india because you do not have that particular political experience so this is the way via which these two interact so you have to understand now what is super ego my friend this particular thing adds as a ethical constraints ethical constraint means that whether it is good or not obviously becoming the prime minister of india is really very big thing for me but i cannot become that particular uh, person because i lack that particular field which has been explained by ego also what if my parents does not want it so uh, pe my parents does not want me to become the prime minister of india so that is my ethical constraint which has been added now my dear friend this is your total consciousness which works under your super ego super ego is all about ethical constraints please remember this particular point ethical constraints like is it true is it good or is it false so that falls under super ego this is really very important so id operates under unconscious mind and mainly discuss pleasure seeking activities nothing much to discuss ego operates in conscious mind and it makes sure that it keeps id in check this is really very important and super ego represents the one concise and it is also very important for ethical constraints i hope is very much clear and this is the basic form of sigmund fruit personality model now we are coming to question number 8 my friends this was the question which has been asked in your 2017 something very much related question number 8 my friends let me see who can give me the right answer identify the type of negotiation where the negotiation process focuses on the several elements that are not related to pay they are generally related to employee welfare and job security okay so i will be waiting for the correct answer for question number 8 my friends let me see who give me the right answer Yes the right answer for this particular question will not be C sorry C is not the right answer D D is also not the right answer the right answer of this particular question will be A C for first of all you have to understand that there are different types of negotiation what is negotiation where two parties who were earlier in the conflict they now try to settle their opinion of differences so that can be done via different different negotiation process although integrative and distribu distributive bargaining are a very important part of your syllabus and they are the most famous types of bargaining so first is distributive bargaining under distributive bargaining let's assume an example of narcissist system leadership under narcissism leadership i have just focus on myself so this is a situation of i win and you lose as simple as that okay so i hope that much is very much clear to you under integrative bargaining it is more and less a uh, example of you can say servant leadership it is an example of both win and win so i will also win and i will allow you also to win so it's type of a i would say uh, reaching to a common standard what is composite bar first let's discuss about productive bargaining productive bargaining i will be giving you incentives so that you can increase by the production of my particular firm so workers will have higher pay they will also have different different perks but when it comes to non pay component then it is known as a composite bargaining so these are certain types of bargaining which are associated to your syllabus as well but please focus on these two these two are really very important that is integrative and distributive so i hope it's very much clear to you yes this is a part of your syllabus as well so uh if you see this particular question will be there in your personality perception this particular question can also be there in the conflict because how you have to manage how you have to result out of the conflict for example let's say today rbi has given conflict in your syllabus and they have just wrote the word management of conflict so how do you will deal with this particular world management of conflict is a very big term so you have to understand that management of conflict mean you will have to understand that there are preventive measures there are curative measures and how you have to deal with certain types of negotiations han ji so chris agris is the right answer this is a very easy question he is the person who 
uh, has given seven i would say seven steps or seven questions by which a person can become immature to a mature level so this is really very crucial and he is also the founder of double loop learning please remember this double loop learning now what is double loop learning you will just uh, go back to your mistakes and you will just try that you are not implementing the same mistakes so assumptions strategies and results so this is double loop learning and this is single loop as simple as that but in journal language du double loop learning is very much sing uh, i would say i would say you go back and you make certain assumptions and then you come back as simple as that now we are coming to transformational leadership my friends so let me see who gives me the right answer for question number 12 Okay I can see there is some mistake in my numbering of questions I'm really apologize for that particular thing So let's see who give me the right answer for question number 12 Question number 12 my friend which of the now we are going into deep of transformational leadership There are four components of transformational leadership and also if you can let me know name name the person which has introduced transformational leadership so it will be really very great revision for all of you can someone also let me know the person who is associated with the transformational leadership also there is a counterpart of transformational leadership which is known as transactional leadership can someone also let me know the synonym of transactional leadership so the floor is open to you you just have to let me know the 12th the answer then you will have to let me know the name of that particular person who introduced transformational leadership and then the counterpart of transformational leadership is transactional leadership and now then you also have to tell me what is transactional leadership is known as yes james burns is the right answer james burns super and bernard m bass is also the person who is associated to it and then transactional leadership is also known as managerial leadership so this is really very important for you the answer for this particular question will be a that is inspirational motivation now let's discuss about different different components of transformational leadership transformational leadership was given by burns as well as bernard m bass so this, these two are person which are associated with the transformational leadership now there are four components of transformational leader the first is idealized influence under idealized influence transformational leader will lead by the examples he will set certain examples and he will just allow different different subordinates to follow him intellectual stimulation he will be encouraging growth as well as learning it's like continuous process individual consideration consideration means that you take and give but under individual consideration transformation leadership will focus on the empowering as well as coaching so this is more about give and take relationship inspirational motorship and inspiring to go on new heights that it's more of self actualization needs so i hope you know about this particular concept which was which we have already discussed in the previous lecture हाँ जी सो वॉट इज द आंसर फॉर नाउ क्वेश्चन नंबर इलेवन अ वेरी इजी क्वेश्चन टेक लेस देन थर्टी सेकेंड्स टू रिवील द आंसर ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर क्वेश्चन हु इज द फादर ऑफ हु इज द फादर ऑफ साइकेट्री ओके सो लेट मी नो हु इज द फादर ऑफ सेक्रेटरी दिस इज ऑल्सो टेकन फ्रॉम योर पर्सनैलिटी एंड परसेप्शन let me know who is giving me the right answer for this particular question very easy question please do not lose your marks in this question this is really very easy let's see who gives me the right answer so now the question uh, numbering is also changed it was not uh, earlier it was different i hope you know it Yes, the Sigmund Freud. Yes, Sigmund Freud is a very important person who is there now under Pareto. I hope you know about eighty twenty principle. This is a like world favor, world famous principle which is followed by this. Max Weber. Max Weber is very famous for your bureaucratic leadership style. Elton Mayo. Elton Mayo is very famous for human relationship theory of management, which is more about relatedness needs. So I hope you know all about all about this. F. W. Taylor is my friend. F. W. Taylor is also known as the father of scientific management. Now my counter question to you is: Can you let me know the father of administrative management? Can someone let me know the father of administrative management? We have discussed this in the yesterday lec lecture as well. who is known as the father of administrative management elton mayo we have known that it is human relationships 
Max Weber is more associated to bureaucratic bureaucratic organization structure. Pareto is very much associated to 80-20. F.W. Taylor is associated to scientific. In the same way, administrative management, the father of administrative management is known as Fiol. Yes, it's Henry Fiol. It's really very important. Journal management, ko to, you should be keeping on your tips right now. Yes, Henry Fiol. So now let's move ahead to question number 12. Now we are coming to EQ and IQ. EQ versus your IQ that is emotional intelligence versus your intelligent quotient. So Hanji, so who will be giving me the right answer for question number 12 now? Which of the following option best describes emotional labor? Emotional labor ka concept if you know then this particular question will be really very much easy for you. Now let's see who give me the right answer for question number 12. Which of the following options best describes emotional labor? Emotional labor ka best definition. And this is the level of RVI grade B my friend. They will test you on different different concepts. Which of the following option best describes emotional labor? Situation wherein you become emotional by seeing the pain of others. This is I think known as empathy. So this cannot be your answer. Situation where you become emotional by remembering this past. I don't think so. Situation where someone needs to manage or suppress his own emotions. Yes. So this is the uh, right definition of emotional labor. Emotional labor is a concept which says that you have to manage or suppress your emotions based on different different conditions. So this is nothing much to explain over here. You just have to remember the concept of emotional labor. Now uh, the answer was C. We have discussed it. Question number 13 my friend. The same thing now comes to emotional dissonance. So can someone let me know what is emotional dissonance? A situation where you are in conflict with your superiors. A situation where are you in conflict with your emotions. Situation where in others are having objections to your emotional expression or situation wherein you feel alone or all of the above. So let me see who give me the right answer for question number 13. Yes, the right answer of this particular question is B. That is situation where, where you are in conflict of your emotions. You do not know how to react. You do not know how to uh, mug up or how to, uh, I would say, give up to that particular situation. Now, my dear friend, we have just discussed emotions and moods. I hope you know about it. So the how to react different 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 emotions, how to react to different different mood is all part of emotional dissonance. Yes, the correct answer of 13 will be B. Now we are coming to question number 14, my friend, a very easy question, but I will be asking many, I would say related question to this particular question, which of under which leadership style a leader follows a rule of self rule while at the same time offering guidance and support only when requested. So there are three basic leadership styles. So now you have to let me know where the self rule is followed. Yes, the answer of this particular question will be D. Now can someone let me know what are the two names, two synonyms of this particular theory? What are the two synonyms of this particular leadership? You have to use the synonyms. Because if you are, if a question comes on descriptive part and if you are not mentioning your synonyms, then your introduction will leave, look very bleak in nature. Can someone let me know what is the other name of free reign leadership? There are two names which I need from your end. Two names which I need from your end. Come on everyone. I know you know the answer. Just type in the chat box below so that I can see your knowledge. No one. So no one has done a good revision, I think. Or shall I wait for another one minute? Lazisphere, yes, Lazisphere and delegative. Now I can see my students are coming Lazisphere and your delegative leadership. All this are synonyms of different free reign leadership, which you have to use in your descriptive component also. So this is leader. He will allow different, different, uh, I would say his subordinates to do their own work. There is a follow of self rule. Yesterday we have discussed that democratic leadership is also known as participative leadership. To some extent it is also known as shared leadership. So these are certain very important names that you have to follow. Now my counter question to you is my friend. Or let me take a poll. Should I ask more counter question or should I move ahead? What is your total take? Let me know. Should I move ahead or should I ask some questions from you? Because if uh, it's totally on your demand only. So let me see. 
what is the opinion of my students so that I can react accordingly or act accordingly rather. Yes, counter question, yes. I need one more yes so that I can ask three yes and then we will move. Yes, so see, now my counter question to you is if let's take the situation of Ram. Ram is here and he has a very less time to make decisions. He has a very less time to make decision. Then among these following options, which of the following leadership style is best suited to Ram? Yes, I can see maximum of you are going with counter question. Okay, chalo, let's ask many counter question then. If Ram is having less time to make decisions, then what is the leadership style which will be associated to Ram? So I can see Hirshab is going with autocratic. Yes, the answer will be autocratic because under autocratic, you will have to make decisions. Uh, you will have to make decisions on a very short period of time. Now, my dear friends, we have this, but uh, let me ask you one more question. Then we let, let's take the example of Sham. Sham is a type of a leader who takes input from all the different different employees who are there in the team but he makes the final decision now what is the category of leadership which will which is associated to sham i repeat my question again sham is a particular type of person who takes input from different different types of or uh, from different employees who are there in the his team but he makes the final decision by himself then my dear friend what is the leadership category wherein you will place sham Autocritic. How can autocritic? Yes, it can be shared or democratic as well. But shared ke liye I have yesterday told you the keyword will be multiple emergence of different leaders. Multiple emergence of different leaders. So this is your shared leadership. Yes, the answer of Sham question will be democratic. But those who are saying democratic is shared are same. I will take that particular counter argument. But please remember under shared the main word is multiple emergence of different different leaders because this is the key concept behind shared leadership. Okay, so I hope you know about it. And yesterday we have covered there are three types of autocritics. I hope you have know about different different types of autocritics. Now can you name that particular person who just you know uses different different false image false image for his employees is it strict benevolent or manipulative i hope you know about different types of autocratic leader which we have covered yesterday so different types of autocratic leader can be strict manipulative and benevolent so under which type of autocratic leader there will be a false image which will be created by the leader but he will be using that false image for his own benefit yes it's manipulative i hope you know about this this is really very very much crucial for all of you now let's move ahead to question number 15 my friends now we are coming to crt theory crt theory which was given by if i'm not wrong joe gracia as well as fred fiedler as well so So now we are coming to CRT theory, strict, benevolent and manipulative. So I can see Aditi is having a good revision. So many, many of you are gone with manipulative. Yes, the answer will be manipulative, my friends. Now we are coming to question number 15, my friend. So under co cognitive resource theory, we all know that there is a very important factor which is known as stress. So this particular question is an application based and this is the level of your RBI grade B. So let me see who gives me the right answer. Hishab is going with B. Okay, so now we have B in the 4A. Let's see who gives me the right answer. Even Snehal Abhishek. Yes, Abhishek Pandey has gone with D. So let me see what other options I can get. His mentor, therefore he visited his mentor and his mentor advised him to use dash during low stress. This is the keyword over here. And if you are not doing cognitive resource theory, then it's totally your bad i can see yes the correct answer will be d not b now this is the situation where is low stress so according to this particular theory if there if there is low stress if there is low stress then you have to use intelligence if there is high stress then you will have to use experience so i can see maximum of you have gone wrong on this particular theory 
the answer will be d we have covered this yes i was very much right it was introduced by fred fielder and joe gracia and you will also have to understand that this is the most important intelligence is the main factor in low stress situation while experience counts during high stress moments so for example let's take this example of mahendra singh dhoni again yesterday we have taken msd example in the gordon elport theory of different different states so for example let's take india sri lanka world cup 2011 why did mahendra singh dhoni forwarded himself because it was a high stress situation he forwarded himself and he used his experience for different different sri lankan bowlers now my dear friends i have written this particular theory of gordon elport theory can someone let me know how many traits were defined by gordon elport theory how many traits were defined by gordon elport theory let me see who gives me the right answer gordon elport theory trait theory one of the most important theories of your syllabus as well gordon elport theory how many traits were defined by gordon elport theory is it 2 3 4 or 5 yes there were three traits can someone let me know chalo i will only tell you central then we have primary and then we have secondary okay so i hope you know about different different traits which was given by this okay ये सेंट्रल कार्डिनल सॉरी सॉरी माय बैड इट्स सेंट्रल कार्डिनल नॉट प्राइमरी सॉरी सॉरी माय बैड ऑल दो कार्डिनल ट्रेड्स आर नोन एज प्राइमरी ट्रेड्स ओनली बट इट वाज टोटली माय स्लिप ऑफ टंग नाउ वी आर कमिंग टू क्वेश्चन नंबर 16 दिस इज टेकन फ्रॉम योर जर्नल मैनेजमेंट अगेन टुडे वी हैव अ मिक्स ऑफ क्वेश्चन बिकॉज इन पेपर यू विल सी मिक्स ऑफ क्वेश्चन ओनली दिस इज रिगार्डिंग योर ऑर्गेनाइजेशनल स्ट्रक्चर functional organizational was introduced by f w taylor to bring about specialization in management okay functional is a bit way between line and staff functional organization is suitable for large organization under functional organization each function is performed by specialist functional organization is also known as product organizational structure yes cardinal central and secondary yes superb Question number sixteen, my friend. So I can see you have to identify the incorrect statement over here. I don't know why Uttam is going with B. Functional organization is a midway between line and staff. B is not B is the correct statement, I think. So there is nothing incorrect in B. You have to identify the incorrect over here. Read the question carefully, and you will just find your answer within seconds. Again, B. Maximum of you are going with B. Okay. Identify the incorrect statement, my friends. B is the right answer, or I would say B is the correct statement. The correct answer over here will be E. Functional organization is known as product. This is wrong because it's divisional organizational structure. Okay, divisional organizational structure is known as product organizational structure. So I don't know why you people were going on different different. Uh, I would say concepts. Now, my dear friend, there is also matrix. Please remember this matrix term as well. Matrix is also very important. Under matrix, you will sign project A, B, and C. Then you will find different different functions like finance, manage, uh, finance, marketing, sales. So this is your matrix. Very important. Please remember that functional authority under matrix flows downwards. It's like a vertical flow. As well as in the project, it flows horizontal. This is certain very very important. Yes. Now I can see that some people are answering C. A combination of functional and product is known as matrix. Superb. So the right answer of this particular question will be E. I don't know why people were going for B. In fact, functional is a very important. Uh, I would say example of line and staff authority. Now, my dear friend, can someone let me know what is the flow of authority under organizational structure? Yesterday only we have covered this. Is it upward or downward? The flow of authority is upward or downward? how b is correct functional organization is a midway between line c under functional you will see that we have different different functions marketing marketing and then we also have let's take finance then we have sales after sales and so on and so forth so if you know the concept of line and staff and authority it says that line authority will have certain line authority will have certain authority which will be there and staff authority will be more of consultative so all those person who will be standing over here they will be having authority at the same time those people who will be ceo they will be there for consult they will be providing their inputs to those two person who are there so you have to understand that line is a very important authority taking function and staff is there for consultative so that's why it is a very important feature of functional 
yes authority is downwards that is really good this is responsibility and responsibility is very important component with accountability as well responsibility and accountability flows upward now my dear friend i am throwing this one more question for all of you please let me know whether it is correct or not true or false okay accountability cannot be delegated accountability cannot be delegated is this true or false very concept checking question let me see who can give me the right answer accountability cannot be delegated is this true or false yes this particular statement is true in nature so that's why we have understood that your authority can be delegated your responsibility can be delegated but your accountability cannot be delegated so i hope you know about different different concepts of this journal management now we are coming to another question of personality and perceptions my friend while formulating theory of personality ixin has given more attention to the social rather than sexual adaptations of individual based on this theme he has identified dash psychological stages can someone let me know how many psychological stages of personality have been defined by this particular personality ixin yes we have discussed this yesterday so we are revising it question number 17 Today I can see Nilesh is not there in our today's session. So question number seventeen, five. Actually, if you see, uh, there are five sexual stages which have been given. So that is covered in your course as well. The answer of this particular question will be yes, eight. Eight stages of personality development has been given by Eskin, which has oral sensory, muscular, locor, latency. Although you do not have to remember this whole data, just remember there are eight stages, and if you can just remember the ages, then also it's very much good. But you do not have to remember this whole data. Question number eighteen. Now we are moving to EQ and IQ. Directly taking an application-based question, my friends. Read this question. I'm giving you two minutes, and then you have to answer this. A very easy question. If you can answer it under one minute, then also it's good. Mohan and you are classmate. He has been scoring scoring good, quite good marks almost in all the subjects, including the one which are applied in nature. Okay. You have also noticed that he never shies from demeaning and hurting the others. When they score low marks, which of the following seems to be log logical conclusion when? we can make about that we can make about mohan han ji so let me see who can give me the right answer for question number 18 let me see my chat box so he has a high iq or low eq iq stands for intelligent quotient and eq stands for emotional quotient he has a high eq but low eq he has a high eq and low eq or whatever you have to say this high applies to both Okay, that's why there are different different statement. So Karthik is coming with A. Snehal is also coming with A. Yes, the answer of this particular question will be A. Why his emotion? Uh, why his intelligent question is high? Because he is solving all the questions which have been there in the, I would say, in his test. You have also noticed that he never shies from demeaning others. This means his IQ is high, but his emotional quality, emotional quotient is low. So that's why the answer of this particular question will be A. IQ deals with how you deals with the technological skills, conceptual skills, as well as design critical skills. IQ is all about your mental intelligence. EQ is all about how you have an empathy towards other, how you can motivate your uh, motivate your other employees. It's totally based on different different concepts of your psychology. Now let's come to question number nineteen, my friends. Again, going back to motivation. You also have to name that person who has introduced this theory of theory X and theory Y. Read the following statement and select the most incorrect statement from the below. This is regarding theory X, my friend. A very easy question. I hope maximum of you will give the right answer. Question number twenty, my friends. Let me see who can give me the right answer of this particular question. This is regarding your assumptions which have to be made by theory X managers and theory Y managers. Yes, William Uchi has given theory Z, not theory E. Yes, nineteen E. William Uchi is not the person who has given theory X or Y. Please remember, this is MacGregor. 
theory Z was given by William Uchi. And can someone let me know which two nations was involved under the different studies which was done by William Uchi? So theory Z has been given by William Uchi. We all know that. And which two nations were compared by William Uchi for giving theory Z? Can someone let me know? This we have discussed yesterday as well. William Uchi, yes, USA and Japan. So he applied all his learning from Japan to USA. So Japan at that particular time was doing good and he applied all those learning to USA. Hanji, so now let's move to question number 20. I think we are halfway to the mark of our today's session. I need your energy till the end. Yes, US and Japan. Superb. Question number 20, my friend. Henry Fiol has given 14 principles of management. In the same regard, identify the principle wherein Fiol Explain that organizational activities must have one central authority and one plan of action. Each group of organizational activities should have same objective, should be directed by one manager using one plan for achievement of one common goal. This is really very easy. We have just discussed in the yesterday lecture that it is unity of direction. Unity of direction says that let's take this as manager one, manager two and manager three. All these different different managers have to move in one organizational goal. That's why the answer of this particular question will be unity of direction. Although many people will now say that it's unity of command. Unity of command says that there should be one boss who is giving to one sub orders to one subordinate. So this is your unity uh, of command. So, but in the question, it has clearly said that it has to be one central authority, having one plan of action, having same objective, having one manager, having one achievement. There is nothing to say regarding one boss and something. That's why the answer was unity of direction. So we have covered unity of direction and for quick your quick revisions, we have 14 principles of Henry Fiol. Division of work, this is regarding specialization which you have to do. You have to divide your work under small, small parts. Authority and responsibility, authority and responsibility, you have to keep a balance. You do not have to give higher authority for low responsibility. You have to keep that equilibrium in nature. Discipline, you also have to come to your organization on time. You will have to make sure that your all your actions are under discipline. Unity of command is then unity of direction, just I have told you. Subordination of individual interest to journal interest. Focus for all the people on the organization. You should not just focus on yourself. Renumination. Renumination means that you have to give them good compensation packets. Centralization. Centralization means that you have to keep all the authority with yourself. It means that you do not allow different, different other people people to take actions for on your behalf. Scalar chain. Scalar chain we have just discussed that it's a formal way of communication. Scalar chain may one more important concept is gang plank because if these two person have to communicate they communicate via gang plank. Order. Order means that certain I would say equipment should be placed at their particular place so that there is no I would say wastage in the finding of time. Equity, you have to deal your all the different men employees with women or with the same stature only. Stability of tenure, reduce your employee turnover ratio. Make sure that they re remain in your organization for a longer period of time. Initiative, allow your employees to come forward to take the initiative so that your productiv productivity will also improve. Respirated crops is all about teamwork like collegial model which we have discussed right now. So I hope you know about different different models of communication one manager what is this one manager can you please explain your doubt Uttam now we are coming to question number 21 again this has been taken from your bargaining techniques very important for conflict resolution now let's see who give me the right answer for question number 21 this question is regarding conflict resolution, different different negotiation techniques. Very easy question and this is directly very important when it comes to the, uh, I would say, core concept of conflict. Key word to differentiate between unity of direction and unity of command. One direction, one goal are an example of unity of direction. Unity of command, Kelly, you can say you have to need to have one boss giving direction to one subordinate. One subordinate. So you have to remember two alag alag set of different, different, I would say, uh, 
uh, I would say different different concepts. One direction you are moving just in one direction. You are just moving in one direction. For in real example, you are just moving right now for clearing RBI grade B. This is your unity of direction. What is unity of command? At the same time, you are listening to my voice. You are not listening to our competitor voice. So this means that you are getting instructions from one place at one singular time. If currently you are using, for, let's say, other different YouTube channel, at the same time you are also using our. This is a violation of unity of command. Okay, so unity of command says that at a time you have to follow that one particular person only. So this is unity of command. Yes, the answer of this particular question will be distributive. Why distributive? Because it doesn't take care of any other person. This is an example of win and lose. Can someone let me know what is a? Uh, I would say uh, right option if I write win win. can someone let me know what is the i would say if i write this particular term win win for all the employees then your answer will be yes it will be your integrated bargaining so i hope we have covered this topic very much in the detail if you understood these two particular bargaining i think that much is enough for you but if you want to go deep then you will have to root certain more types of bargaining like productive bargaining we have already covered productive bargaining in the first time you will give more and more incentives to your employer to increase the product time and then we have constancy and composite you can read this particular slide when you are revising now let's come to question number 22 now we are having certain planning component my friend this is also a very important component of journal management let's see who give me the right answer for planning these are certain types of plans okay certain types of plan like you have rules you have methods you have strategy you have your procedure okay so you have to let me know what is the different different first let me know what is the correct answer for question number 22 my friends there are various types of plans in the uh, in the same regard identify the type of plan wherein a company works on the course of action which an organization tries to relate itself in an environment to keep itself with competitive yes the answer here will be c strategy superb under strategy i will make sure that i will make a plan so that i can come over my competitor for example let's say today there are two burger chains burger burger chains which is your mcd and burger king now if they are introducing new new burgers every day and every day and now then other person will also have to make your own strategy to overcome their competitor this is strategy what is policy policy are the broad contours for example for burger burger king the policy will be like we will be having good quality of you know buns which will be they using objective objective can be their goals as well procedure procedure kya hoga procedure means that they will be taking that particular bun from let's take from a farmer and then they will be selling that particular bun at their own at their own outlet this is an example of procedure now there is also methods method refers to step by step work which they have to do for example if let's take they are making double crunchy burger so they will have to include two patties so this is an example of method method mein you have to go by step by step what is procedure procedure starts from your output and then it comes to different different domains of that particular business rules rules are an example of let's take if you break that particular look then you will be penalized so if let's take burger king employee is not taking an off on sunday but that is a very important day when it comes to the franchise so that is a rule so you cannot take i would say a uh, holiday on sunday so these are certain types of planning which you have to understand i hope it's very much clear to you now my dear friends earlier we also know that planning organizing staffing directing and controlling these are certain very important functions of management can someone let me know how many components are there in directing yesterday only we have discussed this how many components how many functions are there in directing is it 3 4 5 or 6 we have discussed this yesterday only chalo chalo fast i request you all to please be active so that we can save our time what will be the correct answer for question number 20 uh, i would say this particular question guess the answer will be four directing is the heart of management here the action takes place we have covered this yesterday also very important yes hishab is going with the right answer under mobile planning we have a forecast under organizing we have mobilization of resources staffing is putting right men to right place controlling is all about having different different 
parameters via which you can compare your actual performance to the standards this is really very important yes communication supervision motivation and leadership superb or the right term would be effective leadership okay but if you are using leadership it's okay but i have this particular <laughs> issue of pinpointing it's effective leadership now question number 23 again this is taken from your different conflict management under conflict management there are two types the first can be preventive and then you have curative okay so first answer this particular question and then i will explain you yes even jyoti is going with the right answer communication supervision motivation and leadership superb four i can see maximum of you are giving the right answer so those who are not able to give the right answer i request you to please watch watch part 1 or part 1 which was uh, live telecasted yesterday question number 23 my friends preventive hoga ya curative hoga there can be two conflict management styles so now for this particular question yes the correct answer will be b now we will be coming to different different techniques later but let's understand what is preventive for example preventive are a different types of techniques of conflict management wherein you take those steps before the conflict takes takes place for example if conflict is taking place let's take today then you will take all those different different step before today yesterday also or you can also say day after tomorrow or not tomorrow day after yesterday okay so these are certain steps which you take in advance before the conflict and what is curative curative are the certain measures which you take after the conflict so this is before and this is after under after you will see your negotiations as well that's why i was putting different different questions on negotiation now when it comes to preventive what are the different different preventive steps the first is effective of two way communication make a good system of communication in your organization so that con conflict doesn't arise establishing common goals have a unity of direction unity of direction rahega to everyone will be very much clear in your organization that they have to follow certain set i would say certain goals so that's why the answer of this particular question will be two refreshing of conflict will fall under curative style because conflict has taken place now you are just reducing it so this is an example of curative okay so this is a directly screenshot which has been taken from your concept notes which we are providing in edutap so this is a very important preventive measures of managing con conflict question number 25th johari windows my friend very important concept so i'm not asking too much deep because in rbi you will not see deep questions on management but they can ask you johari windows was given by which of the following personalities so we all know there are four components of johari windows there are four different windows or four different facets of johari windows let me see who can give me the right answer for question number 24 yes 23 ka the right answer is b superb Yes, it's Joseph Luft and Harry Ignam. Superb. Under when it comes to the when it comes to the Johari window model, we have four components, which is known as first is known as open arena. Under this particular component, I know about myself and the other people also know about myself. So this is like everyone knows about everyone. Under blind spot, blind spot. I do not know about myself, but others note about myself. So it's like the rumor which is make, going out in the public side. Okay. hidden or facade hidden or facade is a area which i am hiding from the general public so if i want to hide certain things then i will be keeping that under this particular component unknown no one knows even i don't know and even the public doesn't know so it's like no one knows about nothing so this are certain components of johari windows do practice a descriptive question on johari windows it is really very important you can write a short note of 300 words or at max 200 at least 200 sorry or at max 400 okay So now let's come to question number twenty-five. So this is a question which has been taken from again from your organizational behavior. OB is a very big component. Question number twenty-five, my friend. Quite often, a change, organizational change. Sorry, not from organizational behavior. This is from organizational change. 
initiates a sequence of related supported changes to adjust to the change organization has to modify many aspects of organization since all the aspects are interrelated so if one change is made then other change will also be made if that one change is made then also third change will be made so this is known as domino effect my friend yes superb so this is an example of domino effect this you can also understand when it comes to the systemic risk systemic risk is an example of domino effect or not systematic mind you this is a component of finance so i'm really sorry to discuss it in the management lecture but under systematic uh, under systemic under systemic risks you can see some domino effect for example if let's take if ilfs ILFS one of the most important NBFC field then you can see Divan housing also field Lakshmi Vilas housing also field Yes Bank also field so these are certain dominoes which was falling out after the NBFC crisis question number 26 my friends a very easy question organizational change is defined any any alteration in one or the more elements of the organization which of the following is not an example of organizational structure so we all know there can be changes which can be done from two sides first is work related and the second is organizational related not wasting much of your time because this is very journal nature the answer will be e because high quality of internal work motivation is a task related thing okay which can also be said it is work related things okay so you can see there are task related changes and there are structure related what is the structure organizational structure okay so you have to even change hierarchy change span of management span of control my friends i hope you know about it this was given chalo we will discuss this we have a question on span of control in the later part of the video so i hope this particular point is really very clear to you this is just basic knowledge regarding organizational change now we are coming to different models of organizational change my friends Okay, so organizational change. Let me see who can give me the right answer for question number twenty-seven. Till then, I will have some water break, my friends. Question number twenty-seven. Come on, I am waiting for all of your answers. In an organization, there will always be some forces in the favor, and changes. Some forces will also be opposing that changes. So this is referred to as. Yes, it's B. Field of forces. It's known as field of forces because there will be some positive forces and there will be also negative forces. Positive forces, they will be promoting that change, and negative forces will be saying that change is not good. <coughs> Sorry. this was the concept which was given by kurt levin okay so this is a very important concept when it comes to organizational change now let's move to this particular theory of kurt levin question number 28 kurt levin model of organizational change is very 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 important my friends because even in the year 2017 18 there was some direct and indirect questions of pyqs of rbi so let's see who give me the right answer for question number 28 28 d yes there are three stages of organizational change according to the kurt levin the first is unfreezing the second is change or you can also say it's or the second is refreeze now can someone let me know which stage of organizational change according to kurt levin is known as a stage of transmission or stage of transitions where the maximum transitions change place very easy question okay so we have unfreeze change and refreeze this refreeze is also known as freeze okay so don't get confused can someone let me know which stage of organizational yes it's change stage where you will make maximum changes this is the stage of unequilibrium unequilibrium means what that you will be making your out making yourself out of the old mindset you will be coming out of your equilibrium and this is a stage where you will go under equilibrium equilibrium mein kyu jana hai because now you will fixing all those changes so this is really very important stage of transition is change this is the uh, reference which i was giving to you yes maximum of you are given the right answer to so answer oh, sorry as yes. question number 29 my friends a very easy question change may be obsolescence or 
skills of a person however an organization will have to bear the cost because it cannot be dispensed without this person so when organizational changes are also taking place there are certain cost associated to it and these certain cost are known as sunk cost so the same concept of accounting those who are from commerce background they know about sunk cost this is really very important now my dear friend one more model which is coming to my mind is adkr model can someone let me know what is the full form of adkr model which was given by jeff hitiat he had sorry not hit yet jeff yet so let me discuss it with you because right now i wanted to save all of your time see a stands for awareness d stands for desire k stands for knowledge again a stands for ability and r stands for reinforcement okay so this is a model which was given by adkar which is given by ejs hadar jeff yet and this is a really very important model when it comes to the organizational change now my dear friend i have just wrote the term reinforcement over here can someone let me know na the name of the person who has given reinforcement theory of motivation we have discussed this yesterday al also yes a is for awareness d is for desire k is for knowledge second a is for ability and r is for reinforcement Yes, I can see maximum of you are now coming with the right answers. Can someone let me know the name of the person who has given reinforcement theory of motivation? I am waiting for all of your answers. Let's see who give me the right answer. Come on, everyone! I am waiting for your all all of your answers. Yes, it's B. F. Skinner. And uh, moving on the same line, there was a concept of law of learning. law of learning is been given by law of learning was given by again this is a concept which is related to reinforcement only can someone let me know the name of that particular person which has given law of learning law of learning was given by i am waiting for all of your answers i am watching the chat box the moment i receive the correct answer i will reveal it Come on everyone I'm waiting for all of your answers. Yes, EL Thorndike. EL Thorndike. So this is really very good to see that your revision is also going on a good level. Now my dear friend when we are talking about reinforcement theory then we also have this particular theory which is known as nudge theory. Can you name that two particular persons which have given nudge theory? And if there is a descriptive question on nudge theory, and if you are not mentioning the name of those persons who have given nudge theory, then how will an evaluator will give you ten out of ten on introduction part? This is a big mistake which people are doing in the evaluation which I am checking right now. Can someone let me know the two persons who are associated to nudge theory? Come on, everyone! I request you to participate. We are almost halfway to our, or more than halfway, I would say. Yes, Richard and Carl Sustain, Richard Thaler and Carl Sustain, superb. Okay, so now let's move to question number thirty. In the field of management, the concept of span of management or span of control concerns to which of these statements? This is also known as span of control. Okay, so can someone let me know what is the correct statement regarding span of control as well as span of management? Sarvagya is all Sarvagya. Sarvagya is also going with the right answer. Car sixteen and this yes, superb. The answers are correct. Question number thirty, my friends. A very important question on span of control. If you see, there are different different topics in general management: delegation, decentralization, authority, responsibility, accountability, planning, organizing. So there is too much to study, but if you study selectively, it can be really good to you. Yes, a determination can. a determination number of individual can be managed effectively yes this particular statement is correct and can someone let me know the concept was given by which personality we have discussed this yesterday can someone let me know the name of that particular person who has given the concept of span of control which is also known as span of management again i am looking to my chat box it's the name starts with sir come on enough of hint it's sir ian hamilton not wasting not wasting much of your time sir emal hamilton is very very famous for this particular concept yes i can see now maximum of you are coming with right answer shubham sharma is going with some grossness i don't know why grossness 
ओके नाउ माई वन मोर क्वेश्चन टू यू दिस इज अ वेरी हाई लेवल क्वेश्चन माई फ्रेंड सो आई रिक्वेस्ट यू ऑल टू लिसन टू यू एस इफ लेट्स टेक राम इज डूइंग अ रूटीन टाइप ऑफ वर्क रूटीन टाइप ऑफ वर्क देन ही विल फॉलो इधर वाइड और नैरो सो अकॉर्डिंग टू यू इफ राम इज डूइंग अ रूटीन टाइप ऑफ वर्क विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग टाइप ऑफ स्पैन ऑफ कंट्रोल शुड बी रिकमेंडेड टू राम शुड ही फॉलो वाइड और शुड ही फैलो शुड ही फैलो शुड ही फॉलो सॉरी नैरो कैन समर लेट मी नो समथिंग ऑफ रूटीन इन नेचर विच इज वेरी बेसिक इजी इन नेचर विच कैन बी डन बाय मैक्सिमम नंबर ऑफ एम्प्लॉय सो विल राम फॉलो वाइड और नैरो स्पैन ऑफ कंट्रोल I am waiting for of your answers. Yes, he will follow wide span of control. Why? Because this particular subordinate and this particular subordinate are itself, I would say, capable of doing that particular thing. But under narrow, I will be using small span of control. And under narrow, there is a more important thing of specialist. For example, this particular person is of finance. Then these two particular will be of finance only. This is also. Let's take this example. These are marketing people, so they will have a narrow span of control. Okay, and because of narrow, the, there is a tall structure which goes under the organization. Because of wide span of control, there is a flat structure. Okay, I hope you know about this. Is different concepts. Question number thirty-one. Now, my dear friend, let's comes to ethics. so shubham is saying grossness span of management according to my best knowledge shubham it was given by sir ian hamilton only but i don't know what grossness you are re referring to but still if you have that knowledge i truly appreciate it haan ji question number 31 you have to identify that particular subject or that particular theory of ethics or approach of ethics rather which explains the morality of the action based on goals and ends to be achieved okay this this approach prescribes that an action is right if it leads to happiness agar aapka end is leading to happiness then it is good and if not then it is wrong okay so let's see who give me the right yes theological theories are example of this because the word tele means ends this is really very important the ontological authority is more about your total actions which you have to take it do not matter ki last mein kya hoga it is total about the journey which is there so this is the ontological virtue ethics virtue ethics you can say that it is example of a profession for example it's totally up to you for not up to you let's take an example of a doctor a doctor has to treat the terrorist in the same manner while he is treating the normal people so it's the virtue of that particular person it's like total honesty it's like total diligence to that particular performance what is meta ethics meta ethics is all about larger domain you do not focuses on the action you do not focuses on the results as well it's a bigger picture which comes into the picture okay which comes into the society i would say B is the correct answer of this particular question, and if you want to read more, this is an explanation for all of you. Question number thirty-two. Now we are having some mix of questions of corporate governance and ethics. You, utilitarian is for I think larger good of I would say larger good of society. So how can it be utilitarian? Now question number thirty-two. Nothing much to discuss over here. Cadbury committee is very famous. Which was set up in 1991, if I'm not wrong. It was set up by Financial Reporting Council. This is really very important. And if a question is there regarding different different committees of corporate governance, then if you are me not mentioning Cadbury Committee, it was one of the most important committees, which was set up in the USA. Yes, this was set up not USA. It was set up in London. Sorry, which is a part of UK. So yet it was set up in 1991. Question number 33, my friends. corporate governance question if you see in the in the objective part it will be very much in the easy you can see theories of corporate governance you can see models of corporate governance they will ask you principles so you just have to read the question twice and then mark your answers yes 32 the answer will be b now we are coming to so called anglo american model of corporate governance emphasize on the interest of shareholders it relies on single tier board of directors which is normally nominated nominated by non executive directors elected anglo american mo model of corporate governance is also known as the answer of this particular question is also is hidden in the introduction it's single tier why because board of directors are the single line which will make 
which will make decisions for its management which will also make decisions for its shareholders so this is a very easy model of i would say of corporate governance now we are coming to question number 34 this is one of the most important international regulations when it comes to the corporate governance so sin uh, bans oxley act of 2002 addresses which of the following dimensions of corporate governance passed in the year 2002 by usa okay cadbury committee remember it is from uk but uh, this particular act has been taken from usa guess the correct answer here will be b i'm not wasting much of your time on the easy questions this is really very easy you have to just remember the name of that particular act and if there is a question on corporate governance like there was a last last year so you have to mention all these different different regulations yes the answer will be b question number 35 again taking some questions from general management because we wanted to have a good flow towards the management so we have covered different different chapters today we have covered personality we have covered conflict we have covered organizational change we have covered different different models of organizational behavior as well and we have also covered leadership communication general management so today was a good class i would say regarding different different concepts question number 35 my friends which of the following statement is the most incorrect statement you have to identify the most incorrect controlling controlling is one of the last step of management because after controlling you go back to planning okay but although controlling is a continuous process but it is also known as the last step of management and mind you planning is known as the primary step rest all the all the different sub, all the different parts of management are known as secondary Yes all of the above statements are correct this is the right answer of this particular statement controlling is both backward looking and forward looking why it is backward you will see that your actual performance is compared with your standards why it is forward looking you will make sure that those mistakes are not carried out again in the planning stage controlling is a process of evaluating actual performance we have just tried to discuss this controlling is in continuous process it follows a definite definite pattern you follow controlling back to planning controlling is an action oriented areas of performance this is also correct that's why the answer will be e okay now we are coming to question number 36 one of the most important models when it comes to the role of management McKinsey 7S model was developed by two consultants of McKinsey Consultancy organization which was Robert Waterman and Tom Peters the model is a powerful tool for assessing and analyzing changes in the internal this is again taking from organizational change in the internal situation of the organization it is based on seven key elements so there are seven s so can someone let me know which of the following is not an element according to seven mckinsey seven s framework come on everyone hardly four questions to go i request to everyone to please participate yes it's e service is not the answer now my dear friend one more counter question to you all of you is that if i ask you what is the uh, central element of mckinsey framework what will be your answers will be the answer is hidden under this particular set of options if i ask you the central element then the answer will be what will be the answer if i ask you the central element of McKinsey framework yes it's shared value superb okay so McKinsey 7s framework has this particular strategy structure systems mind you if you see this particular three steps sorry they are known as hard elements why they are known as hard elements because they are very concrete and it's very difficult to change them this is the most important point now if you see from this particular point these three are known as soft elements you can change style of your different leaderships you can change staff and you can also change skills this is known as soft element and this is known as a central element mind you so if you are having this pictorial representation in your mind then you can answer any question which is based on the mckinsey seven s framework so all these three are a part of hard elements all these three are a part of soft element and this particular part is known as a central element my friend question number 37 so i think now we have some questions on the ethics only so let me see who give me the right answer for question number 37 altruism meaning of context of ethics and can someone let me know the opposite as well opposite of altruism according to the leadership theories which we have studied it's narcissism 
okay so this is very very much easy so what does altruism means if you even know the literal meaning of altruism you can easily solve this particular question yes the answer of this particular question will be yes the answer will be d we have already studied about altruism in the leadership part as well to the some extent not wasting much of your time let's move ahead question number 38 now there are different theories of ethics my friend theories of ethics now let's see who give me the right answer you have to obtain the middle course between excess and deficiency so this was given by let's see who gives me the right answer for question number 38 identify the theory of ethics which follows the middle course between the excess and the deficiency doing so require restraints and controlling greed or extents so according to abhishek it's unilateralism okay yes uttam is going with the right answer it's not no no not a is not the right answer virtue will not be the right answer earlier i thought you were saying the right answer but yes kartike even anukriti is going with the right answer it's b golden mean theory golden mean theory says that you also need to maintain an equilibrium jyada khush bhi mat ho jyada udas bhi mat ho so just beach pe rao and you will be having that good pleasures of your life what is virtue ethics we have just now discussed it's all about your moral responsibilities theological theory which is focusing on the ends i am focusing on my ends Relativism, greater good of larger number of people. Greater good of larger number of people. Okay, what is constitutionalism? It means that if your ends don't get confused between C and E, if your ends are good, then he will say it is very much good in nature. Do follow it. If your ends are not good, then the, he will say. that it is not good to follow it okay although the same theme remains the same but the wording has to be remembered exactly okay so we have covered golden mean theory it was given by ac shortly we all know this and you have to obtain the middle course please remember you cannot go on extremes you have to be on the middle path as simple as that question number 39 this is regarding the duties which was given by wd ross so there was seven set of duties which was given by wd ross a very easy question question number 39 my friends there are seven duties which have been given by wd ross and all the questions which i have asked you you will find the same level in the rbi as well some will be very easy some will be very tough some will be application based and some will be like total bouncer for all of you han ji the correct answer of this particular question will be d enjoyment so those who are giving the answer d kudos to all the all those because this was a very tough question because many people have skipped wd ross because it is not in the syllabus i would say yes these are certain i would say rules which have been given for happy life so you have to remember fidelity justice gratitude repetition benefits non malignance and self improvement just read ha just have a journal reading and it is more than enough even if you do not remember each and everything it's okay but you just need to have a journal reading yes maximum of you are going with d so that's really very good to see now the last question of our today session now we have kept it on the justice so that there are different different types of justice my friends so now i'm waiting for the answer of question number 40 so you have to identify that particular type of justice where fairness or justice is ensured at the beginning and all people are treated equally okay so if you see the marathons that are happening in olympics or different different races you see that one person is standing ahead of that particular person and so on and so forth this is because of the curvature which comes on the side of that particular track so this is an example of commutative justice under commutative justice i will make sure that i will ensuring justice to all the different athletes at the start of the race what is procedural justice my friend all your lawsuits are an example of procedural justice for example you have to understand that th there will be a certain set of procedure via which justice will be derived compensatory justice for example we have pradhan mantri national i would say resource fund or pradhan mantri different different fund cm relief fund or pm uh, 
relief fund you will see if there is a certain natural accident or there is a big mishap in the country all the fund is allocated from this particular fund to the all the victims so under this you will give them let's say 2 lakh those who have died so this is a type of a compensatory justice retributive justice for example let's take jail okay jail you are giving them penalize you are penalizing them so that they will not do that particular mistake again what is communitarian justice communitarian justice means that you are giving justice to the entire society okay so you have to understand for example let's take we have different different reservations we have different different uh, allocations for different different ministries different different i would say reservation is given based on communitarian justice only community Australian justice, for example, you see Australia tribes. You are giving justice on that particular concept. So I hope it's very very much easy for you. The answer for this particular question will be B, not E. So I hope the session was interesting for all of you, and we have covered different different concepts of management. Please remember that leaders. Uh, uh, first, let's take motivation, communication, leadership, and general management. इनको तो आपको टिप्स पे ही करके जाना होगा यू कैन नॉट लीव एनी क्वेश्चन विच इज कमिंग फ्रॉम मोटिवेशन कम्युनिकेशन लीडरशिप एंड जनरल मैनेजमेंट ऑल दो देर आर देन कम्स द डिफरेंट डिफरेंट सेट्स लाइक ऑर्गेनाइजेशनल बिहेवियर ऑर्गेनाइजेशनल चेंज देन यू ऑल्सो हैव पर्सनैलिटी एंड परसेप्शन देन यू ऑल्सो हैव योर इमोशनल ई क्यू एंड आई क्यू देन यू हैव योर एथिक्स दीज आर सर्टेन चैप्टर्स वेयर इन यू विल हैव टू फोकस टू मच ऑन दी ओनली बेसिक कंसेप्ट यहाँ पे अगर आप बेसिक कंसेप्ट भी कर लोगे दैट इज ऑल्सो गुड टू गो बट मोटिवेशन कम्युनिकेशन लीडरशिप एंड जनरल मैनेजमेंट में जितना पढ़ सको पढ़ लो दैट इज रियली वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर यू आई होप द सेशन वॉज इंटरेस्टिंग फॉर ऑल ऑफ यू एंड इफ यू हैव एनी फीडबैक फॉर मी इफ यू वॉन्ट टू गिव मी अ गुड फीडबैक और अ नेगेटिव फीडबैक I am appreciating your reply at hello at the rate at the tap, or you can drop your feedback in the comment section as well. For descriptive uttam, I would say, I think from now only ten or eleven days are only left. So whatever you are doing, it's really good. But if you take my piece of advice, attempt three sets of full time. Full time means that give your finance in one go, then take a break, and then. take a break and then start with your esi in english this will this is a really very important for you because on the d day i have myself experienced that in this particular slot that is esi in english your hands will be like too much tired so give three sets take it from now only you can plan it accordingly thank you hirshab this is the first time i am teaching for rbi grade b that's a really very good comment for me and uh, chalo then everyone all the best for your phase 2 this is the last time we are meeting before phase 2 and uh, i wish you all the very much all the very best for your phase 2 i hope you come out with the flying colors how much time division for descriptive answer if you take my take then uh, i would say for 10 marker that is of 400 words do not take more than 25 minutes agar 25 minutes mein agar aapko nahi aa raha to aage bhi nahi aayega 25 minutes is the maximum limit my friends for 15 markers which is of 600 words take less than 30 minutes as simple as that and my dear friend aisa nahi hai ki 400 ka hi aapko likhna hai agar aap 350 bhi cross kar ja to then to it's really very good but target ki 380 tak ho jaye ओके एंड इट इज रियली वेरी पॉसिबल अगर आपके कंसेप्ट स्ट्रॉग है तो सिक्स सिक्स हंड्रेड में इवन इफ यू आर राइटिंग टू सिक्स फिफ्टी इट्स रियली वेरी वेरी एप्रिशिएबल फ्रॉम माई एंड बिकॉज हिटिंग एटलीस्ट सिक्स फाइव फिफ्टी एंड हिटिंग थ्री एट्टी रिस्पेक्टिवली अंडर फिफ्टीन मार्कर एंड टेन मार्कर यू आर गुड टू गो यू आर सेफ ऑन द वर्ल्ड लिमिट साइड बट योर कंटेंट हैज टू बी द बेस्ट Thank you, Rajneesh. It really means a lot to me. Although I don't see you in my lectures, but कोई बात नहीं, I will take that comment. On that note, my friends, all the very best for phase two. It's really very great opportunity for you. Go out with full confidence, and I wish you all the very best from the entire team of Edutap. And uh, thank you, Anukriti. if you can drop that particular feedback on hello at the rate at the tap it will really means means to lot to me chalo 
so Rajneesh is saying are you also writing phase 2 this time there will be some surprises for you so I'm not going to reveal everything right now chalo till then bye bye and take care it's really great to see all of you in my sessions and all the very best people